Hey everyone, I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will learn everything we need to know about the ASP.NET lifecycle. First, let's have a look at the agenda for today's session. We shall begin with learning the basics of ASP.NET. Then, we shall go on to learn the ASP.NET lifecycle. While learning about the lifecycle, we shall focus on two different types of ASP.NET lifecycle the application lifecycle and the page lifecycle. But before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So, without any further ado, let's get started with what is ASP.NET. ASP.NET is a server side technology used for developing dynamic web applications. It is the latest version of Active Server Pages. Active Server Pages is a server side scripting language and engine used for developing web applications. It is essentially a web based platform that helps to create dynamic web pages for programmers. ASP.NET produces interactive data driven web applications on the internet, which helps to build websites and web applications in a better and colorful way. Now, when we know what is ASP.NET, it is time to move on to the life cycle of ASP.NET. ASP.NET lifecycle is very crucial when it comes to developing applications. The lifecycle includes two different stages that help in producing dynamic outputs. These two stages together are known as the ASP.NET lifecycle. The two stages in which the lifecycle is divided are application lifecycle and the page lifecycle. Now we shall have a look at both of these types in detail. First, let's have a look at the application lifecycle. Application lifecycle is the part that starts when the user makes a request. These requests involve several stages and these stages are application start, object creation, HTTP application, dispose and application end. Let's have a look at each of these steps in detail. The first step we have is application start. Whenever a user requests an application for accessing a web server, first the request is checked and then the request for accessing it is provided. The second stage we have is the object creation. Object creation helps in holding all the information about the request, cookies and browsing information. It also holds HTTP context, HTTP request and HTTP response by the browser. The third stage is the HTTP application. HTTP application holds back all the subsequent information sent back to the user by the web driver. For example, if we have two different applications, like one is a gaming application and the other one is a social media application, then that means there will be two HTTP applications that are to be created to process the application. The fourth stage is dispose. Dispose helps in erasing the unmanaged resources when the objects are no longer needed. Moving forth, the last and the final stage is the application end. Application end helps to unload the memory of an application. Here, unloading memory means cleaning up the unwanted files in the application. Now when we know about the application lifecycle, let's have a look at the page lifecycle. Page lifecycle includes initialization, restoring and execution. When an ASP.NET page is called, it goes through some phases before the response is sent to the user. Let's have a look at the phases involved in the page lifecycle. Beginning with page request, then comes page start, page initialization, page load, validation, event handling, rendering and unload. Let's have a look at all these steps in detail. The first phase of the page lifecycle is page request. When the user requests a page, the server checks the request, compiles the page and responds to the user. If the page is requested several times, then the cache will check the request to see if the output exists or not. And after that, it will send a response back to the user. 
The second phase is page start. Page start holds two objects, request and response. The request holds all the information which was sent when the page was requested and the response holds all the information sent back to the user. The third phase is the page initialization phase. During the page initialization phase, all controls are initialized and each controller is provided with a specific ID. In the page initialization phase, themes are also applied to the applications. The fourth phase is page load. In this phase, the application is provided with some control properties and the information is also set using view state and control state. The fifth phase of the page life cycle is validation. When a page is executed, the result of those pages are provided in the form of two conditions, true and false. If the execution goes successful, the result is true, while if there is an error in execution, it returns false. The sixth phase in the life cycle is event handling. This phase is the response to the validation phase. In this phase, pages are loaded again and display the same information. In order to overcome this, a postback event is called. This event helps in checking the credentials of the user. The seventh phase of the life cycle is rendering. It occurs when all the response information has been sent back to the user. The phase also stores all the information that is being sent. The eighth and the final stage of the page life cycle is unload. Unload helps to clean all the unwanted information of an application. It also cleans the memory once the output is sent back to the user. And this was all for today's session. I hope you guys found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.